Hi there everyone, this is Brittany from Teach Me AVA, and today I'm going to go over the next task list, A-3. If you haven't seen the previous video that we made, it's okay. You don't necessarily have to watch all of these videos in order. I would recommend watching them in order though because as soon as you have the basic concepts and we move up in the task list, it's all gonna come together a lot easier for you. All right, so let's talk about it. Section 8-3 is talking about behavior from the perspective of radical behaviorism. Now, this is really important because again, when you have those fundamental concepts down, you're gonna be able to move forward in the task list. So all the information I'm gonna talk about today comes from the Cooper, Heron, and Heward book. And this is from the third edition Applied Behavioral Analysis. Basically the white book that you're gonna to need to talk about anything ABA. So before I get into radical behaviorism, I just want to talk about behaviorism really quick. Basically, behaviorism set the stage for what we want to talk about and what we consider ABA now. So when I say that, I talk about how um, we're using basic research to comprise what we apply in ABA to all of our clients and all the individuals. Since the early 1900s, psychology was one of the main ways that we talked about the human mind, meaning someone's subconscious and their feelings. This is important only because when we talk about ABA, it does stem from psychology, but it does deter from it a lot, hence behaviorism. And now that we're gonna talk about radical behaviorism, you're gonna see why. So what B.F. Skinner essentially did when he came up with the theory and the concepts behind radical behaviorism is that he was trying to talk about how we do have these quote unquote private events that happen. And so he defined private events as any sort of like stimuli or anything that is happening within one's body. Meaning, um, my stomach is growling, right? You can't necessarily hear it, but I can feel it and I can sense that it is happening within my body. So he labeled those as private events. He also talks about how um, he describes mentalistic views about behavior, meaning that somebody is sad. Um, we've talked about this before where we're talking about emotions. So those are mentalistic views. So we're talking specifically just about the sad, happy, mad feelings that we have that can be inside but no one else can necessarily see. So what B.F. Skinner essentially wanted is that he wanted a systematic way to explain human behavior. In comes radical behaviorism. So what he essentially says is that these private events are not any different from public events that happen. They're just observed and they're gonna have to be detailed and they're gonna have to be measured in different ways. Basically what that means is that when we have these private events, we can somehow make them public. Meaning, for example, if I have a toothache, that's something that's happening in my mouth. I don't have x-ray vision, you don't have x-ray vision to be able to tell that there's aching or something going on. But what is it that I do? I would naturally just go Ow, and move my mouth around. Someone else will see that and observe it with their eyes that I have my hand on my mouth and say, you've got a toothache. So now, once again, this private event, this one thing that is happening in my mouth is becoming a public event because someone else has observed it and been able to essentially label that event and say that is pain. You are feeling pain. So now something that is within the mind of my own mind has happened and come out into someone's public space and it's observed and it's measured. It's I'm doing this, right? I'm touching my own skin and that is observable by somebody else. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information and hopefully it helped you out on the basics of radical behaviorism and behaviorism as a whole. Because really we're thinking about this in a form of an umbrella. There's lots of other things that need to be discussed within radical behaviorism, uh, but I won't go into that video today. It is very, very detailed. And if anybody knows how B.F. Skinner writes, it is very difficult to decipher from. So whether you're studying for the task list or you're just someone new that happened to stumble upon radical behaviorism and ABA, I really hope that this was all informational and it gave you a little bit more of a perspective of where our basic uh, philosophies for ABA come from. So if you've liked this video, please subscribe, comment below, ask us any questions. Um, and then if you have even more questions, you can go ahead and take a look at our website at pnaservices.com. 
Once again, I'm Brittany with Teach Me ABA. Have a great day. <laughs>